what's going on guys? My name is Antony. I haven't said that in years, man. Anyways, today I bring you 301 things you didn't know about Minecraft. Anyways, let's go. The only way to place any sort of water in the nether is by putting water in a cauldron. Not sure why or how this is possible, but fair enough. If you throw a trident with the loyalty enchantment while having a full inventory, then the trident will just follow the player around. Iron golems are not able to drown in water. You okay there, mate? I think he's fine. Putting an armor stand on top of a fence will cause the armor stand to float, which looks rather strange. When the endermite was first added into Minecraft in version 1.8, they used the exact same model as the silverfish mob, but was just a different color. The feature of players being able to crawl in one block gaps was actually created by accident. However, Mojan liked this accidental feature so much that they decided to keep crawling in the game. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft in beta 1.8, a bug existed in the game in creative mode. So for some reason, players were able to hit mobs with their sword from a very long distance away, which was just a little bit weird. I mean, just look at this. How is this even possible? Grass paths are a great way to hide your items in Minecraft as you can transport items into to hoppers through the grass path due to them not being a full block. Brown mushrooms are unique as they will emit a light level of 1, whereas red mushrooms do not emit anything. If gravel falls onto soul sand, then the gravel will break. You can reduce a creeper's detection range by 50% if you are wearing a creeper head. I guess the creeper thinks you're one of them. Oh wait, never mind, he still wants to kill me. The crafting recipes for boats are the only recipes that can be unlocked in the recipe book without having any items. All you do is just simply jump into water. When Minecraft became 10 years old, all cakes in the game had a number 10 on it, which looks like this. Bats will still fly away from the player if they are under the invisibility effect. I mean, bats in real life have amazing hearing, so it makes sense. Gravel will drop flint 100% of the time if you use the Fortune 3 enchantment. There are still hundreds of Minecraft facts to cover, but before before we do, let's talk about today's sponsor, Honkai Star Rail. <clears throat> let's get my script ready. Honkai Star Rail is a free-to-play fantasy RPG from the makers of Genshin Impact. Honkai can be played on PC, mobile, and even your PlayStation 5. In Honkai Star Rail, you'll set out on a journey across a huge universe with different worlds to explore and over 30 different characters, all with their own unique elements and playstyles. Honkai features a turn-based battle system that's easy to pick up but satisfying to to master. But, you know, I'm trash at games, so it will take me 10 years. You can also find treasure chests, you know, like Minecraft, solve puzzles, and complete quests to level up. The new 1.5 update features an all-new map. Wait, this isn't my Minecraft world. You'll also get to experience the new five-star characters that are called, and I know I'm gonna say this wrong. Okay, here we go. Wahwo and Argenti. Wahwo is a support character that can heal her allies and also provide attack and energy buffs for her teammates. Argenti is a charming fella with great hair who does not speak and attacks with a cool looking spear that has rose effects. Considering how much I love the old rose in Minecraft, I love this rose effect. By downloading Honkai Star Rail, you can try out the 1.5 update right now and try out all the new changes including the new map and the return of Silver Wolf. If you're logged in for 7 days, you can get 10 free Star Rail passes which you can use to draw for the new characters. Also, you know, enter the promo codes on screen so you can receive see 50 Stellar Jades. Check the pinned comment and link in the description to try out the game for yourself. Thank you to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring today's video, but now, back to Minecraft facts. In Minecraft, it takes 13 long, painful seconds for the player to fall through one cobweb, which is just... Could someone break this, please? Items in Minecraft are even more painful, as they take a long 24 seconds to fall through a single cobweb. Any time now, I want my diamonds. When baby pandas sneak, in Minecraft, they have a 0.1% chance to drop a slime ball. In Minecraft, you are able to duplicate two block tall flowers by using bone meal. Just simply right click on the tall flower with bone meal and bam, you can get an infinite amount of that flower. When end portals were first added into Minecraft, they originally looked like this, appearing blue with transparent patches. I'm not gonna lie, they look kinda cool. If the player generates a Minecraft world, then there is a a 1 
in 280 trillion chance of you generating that exact same world seed for a second time. So yeah, very rare, but still possible. There are exactly 233 bookshelves in a single library within a stronghold. This means the player can yield up to 699 books when they destroy every bookshelf within one library. In the 15W31A snapshot for the 1.9 combat update, the player could respawn the ender dragon by building a creeper face made out of clay. Now this feature was of course a placeholder, but it's still really cool. If an iron golem is low on health, then you can heal them by right clicking on them with an iron ingot. You feeling better now mate? I love iron golems man. The end gateway portal that generates after defeating the ender dragon are usually entered when you throw an ender pearl at it. However, an easier way to travel through the portal is to simply place a trapdoor on the bedrock and force yourself in the crawling position. Once you've done that, just crawl through and bam, you can find an end city. If you look closely at the corner rail texture, you'll notice that it closely resembles an iron pickaxe, which is quite cool actually. There are many different types of slabs in Minecraft, but the first slab ever created was the dirt slab, which looks like this. We never even got the dirt slab, so rest in peace. The bedrock texture in Minecraft is just the stone texture, but with a really high contrast. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, cats were instead obtained as a pet by taming an ocelot in a jungle biome. But then in version 1.14, stray cats became their own separate mob and spawn in villagers. In the snapshot phase for the 1.9 combat update, a glitch existed when it came to boats. So if the player placed a boat on a slime block, waited a few seconds, then got into the boat, you would be launched up into the air. Also, the longer you waited to get into the boat, the higher you would be launched, which was so cool. This is the first ever screenshot for a Minecraft stronghold structure. As you can see, the stronghold looks rather different and has also generated on the surface, which is quite a change to the strongholds we have today. If you look closely at your hotbar in Minecraft, you'll notice that each slot is using the sand texture. I won't lie, this blew me away when I first noticed this. Piglins are able to open and close doors, which is actually quite terrifying to be honest. So we all know that when an animal dies to fire, it drops its cooked variant of the food. However, when an animal dies to a campfire, it drops the raw variant of the food, which is rather strange to be honest. The crawling feature in Minecraft uses the exact same animation as the swimming animation and both look awesome. The Unbreaking 3 book appears in both the Tools tab and the Weapons tab in the Creative Inventory. The Music Disc 11 will play for exactly 1 minute and 11 seconds. In version 1.14.4, there was a glitch with boats where each jump you made on top of a boat, full damage was added for when you walked on land. So for example, if I jump four times on top of the boat and then walk on land, I will take two hearts of damage. So yeah, with this glitch, you could essentially kill you or your friend by jumping on boats. The default color color for a tamed wolf is red. However, in version 1.8, the default color color for a tamed wolf was changed to orange for some reason. Trying to generate a seed using the number zero will just give you a random seed number. This means that getting the number zero seed is impossible, right? Well, actually, no. So if you generate a world using the following seed, then type slash seed within the world, you'll notice that the seed number is in fact zero, which shows that it is possible to get the zero seed. When the killer bunny was first added into Minecraft, it had a one in 2,500 chance to naturally spawn in your world. However, nowadays, it's just an unused mob and you can only spawn it in using commands, which is a bit of a shame to be honest. If you smelt a wet sponge in a furnace, then put a bucket in the furnace, then the bucket will be filled with water when the sponge is finished smelting. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the alpha and beta days of the game, skeletons used to hold their bows like this, which looked really, really weird. Sheep are still able to eat grass through slabs. How on earth are you doing this, mate? The rarest biome in Minecraft 
path is the Modified Jungle Edge, which is an extremely rare variation of the jungle biome. This biome is so rare that it only covers a millionth or 0.0001% of the Minecraft overworld. As some of you know, when chests were first added into Minecraft, they were a full block looking like this. But did you guys also know that the old double chest had a black outline going down the middle, which looked like this? Double chests in Minecraft today do not have this black outline. The Elytra wings are actually a reference to the wing cap item Mario wears in Super Mario 64. Great game by the way. When Endstone was first added into Minecraft, it used to drop cobblestone as a placeholder. Cats in Minecraft are slightly smaller than ocelots. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, there is an exclusive feature where leaves will turn to a white frosty colour when it is snow. Knowing. Okay, that is awesome. Why can't Java Edition have this feature, man? This is the first ever screenshot of spiders. They were originally brown and had black eyes, whereas in Minecraft today, they're black and have red eyes. The pig is the oldest existing passive mob in Minecraft. If a mob is holding a totem of undying, then it will actually work the same as it does for the player when they're about to die, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Fossils are one of the rarest gen generated structures in Minecraft as they only have a 1 in 64 chance to generate per chunk. Pressing F3 and F4 on your keyboard allows you to switch between all the game modes in Minecraft. There is a 5% chance for a fox to spawn with an emerald in its mouth, which is quite a lucky find if you ask me. You are not able to see through clouds when you are below them, but you can see through them if you are above them. Very strange. I forgot to do one of the facts while making this video, so here I am doing it while half asleep. So, item frames in Minecraft use the same texture as the birch planks texture. See? Okay, I'm going to bed now. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, pumpkins used to naturally spawn with their face already carved. In Minecraft today, they don't, and you instead have to carve your own pumpkin face with shears. If you go into game mode spectator mode, then left click on a painting, you can see your Minecraft world through the eyes of a, well, painting. Standing on soul sand next to lava will actually set the player on fire. Ow, this hurts quite a lot. The reason why creepers are their bright green colour is because Minecraft creator Notch wanted them to blend in and be camouflaged with Minecraft's old world terrain, which at the time was a bright green colour. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, Minecraft in the 1.5 update, there was a bug in the game where Gas would shoot diamond helmets at the player instead of their regular fireball. I mean, if a Gas was shooting diamond helmets at me, I wouldn't complain. It's free diamonds after all. Well, sort of. The pumpkin stems on regular pumpkins will always face in the northwest direction of your Minecraft world, making them very useful for navigation. Have you ever wondered why there's this small room above the main part of a desert pyramid? Well, I'll tell you. So the second floor of the Desert Temple actually allows you to perfectly build a fully powered beacon, which is so satisfying. Whether this was done on purpose, I'm not sure, but the second floor is perfect for a beacon. The Piglin Brute mob drops the highest amount of experience points out of any non-boss mob in Minecraft, dropping a total of 20 experience. I mean, I should hope so. These guys are so annoying to kill. The bobbing animation that the Strider makes while walking was initially created by accident. However, the developers thought it was quote, quirky and fun, so it was added as a feature. In Minecraft, there is currently a glitch in the game when it comes to shields. So if you hold up a shield while entering a nether portal, then something very strange will happen. So once you are in the nether, your shield will always be in use, even when you're not right clicking on it to hold it up, which is very useful. This is because you can still sprint and use your weapons while the shield is protecting you. So yeah, a very good glitch. If a fox attempts to pounce and kill a chicken in a snow biome, then the fox can get stuck in snow. You okay there, fox? It looks like you could do with a bit of help. A safe and effective way to get ender pearls from endermen is to trap them in a boat. This is because once the enderman is trapped in the boat, they 
cannot teleport away, which means you're just free to kill them for the enderpearls. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a bit bad. I'm sorry, Enderman. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, slimes were not given the ability to swim, so whenever they entered the water, they would just slowly sink to the bottom and eventually drown, which made me very very sad. But don't worry, in Minecraft today, slimes have had swimming lessons and they can swim around and attempt to kill you, which is just lovely. When the player places down an enchanting table and uses it for the first time, the first level 1 enchantment for a bow will always be power 1. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, there is an exclusive feature in the game when it comes to campfires. So if the player stands on an unlit campfire while they're on fire, Fire, then the campfire will actually become lit, which is a nice attention to detail to be honest. In Minecraft Java Edition, however, this feature is not a thing. This is the first ever screenshot released for wolves in Minecraft. As you can see, they have noticeable differences, such as having different fur colour on the head part of the texture. This screenshot got me thinking, do you think Minecraft should add different wolf textures just like the cats? Let me know in the comments below. Despite the netherite pickaxe being the strongest and most durable pickaxe in Minecraft, the gold pickaxe is still the pick that mines blocks the fastest. In Minecraft, it is actually possible to get out of the world border by using boats. Just simply place a boat next to the world border, get into the boat, and bam, you'll be outside the world border. Be careful though, because you might die. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the early versions of Minecraft in dev, the crafting table block was not yet added into the game. So did this mean players could not craft items at the time? Well, not exactly. So in InDev, if you press the B key on your keyboard, you would open a 3x3 crafting interface as if you were using a regular crafting table. Additionally, when you opened your regular inventory at the time by pressing I, you'll notice that there's no 2x2 crafting grid to craft smaller items. So yeah, despite their being no physical crafting table in Minecraft InDev, you could still craft items by pressing B. So we all know that if you hit a zombified piglin, then things will get a little bit crazy, as all the other zombie piglins will become hostile towards you. And if you ask me, that's not fun at all, it's just very scary. However, if you manage to kill a zombified piglin in one hit, then the rest of them won't become aggro towards you, which is a very relieving feeling. Yeah, that's right, I bet you had no idea that I killed your mate just a few seconds ago. Anyways, let's just move on before he thinks I'm sus. If a creeper is inflicted with a potion effect and proceeds to explode, it will leave behind a lingering form of said potion, which in my case is poison. In Minecraft multiplayer, if your friend crouches by the ocean, then the water itself becomes see-through when you look through your friend's name tag, which is rather strange. Thanks for the help, Derpy Whale. I'm able to see underwater a lot easier. Wait, speak Speaking of water, get back in the water, you're a whale. In Minecraft, you are able to create snow golems underwater, but it's a pretty pointless task as they'll just instantly start dying. I'm sorry mate, I had to do it for the purpose of the video, please forgive me. However, for some reason, you are not able to create iron golems underwater, even though the spawn concept is the same as a snow golem. What gives, man? I'm just staring at a pumpkin. This isn't what I want. I want an iron golem to hold a poppy out for me. When the sign was first added, into Minecraft in 2009, they could only be spawned in as entities, and this was done by pressing the B key on your keyboard. Once spawned in, they would always say, this is a test of the signs, each line can be 15 characters. But yeah, these signs just look really, really weird as entities. As you know, if you have a dirt block on top of a chest, then you are not able to open it. However, if you use a hoe on the dirt, then you are in fact able to open open the chest as you can see. The reason why I'm talking so quietly right now is because I'm recording this fact at 4 in the morning. Anyways, moving on. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, before version 1.8, the chiseled stone brick was considered to be one of the rarest blocks in the game. This was due to the chiseled stone brick not having a crafting recipe and could only be found naturally generated in a jungle temple structure, which are also quite rare as well. If you look closely at the hoglin's texture, you'll notice that it has one nostril bigger than the other. Looking good, hoglin? Wait, 
Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't kill me! In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the enchanting table, when placed, will emit a light level of 12. In Java Edition, however, they don't emit any light level, which is a bit lame. When the creeper was first added into Minecraft in 2009, their texture had a much darker shade of green, which looked like this. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in Minecraft Alpha, there was a feature planned where ghasts would spawn from nether portals in the overworld. However, the feature was never implemented, and good thing too, because that would be absolutely mayhem. When squids were first added into Minecraft, you were able to milk them with a bucket for some reason, which is uh, a bit strange, but okay. When the arrow was first added into Minecraft, it was originally crafted with one feather, one stick, and one iron ingot, whereas in Minecraft today, it's crafted with one feather, one stick, and one flint. Originally, baby zombies did not burn in sunlight, making them extremely annoying for players, but now they do. The animation for loading a crossbow in Minecraft Bedrock Edition is actually different to the animation in Java Edition, as you can see. I don't know if anyone's actually tried this, but you are not able to make a nether portal in the end. A compass will always point towards the world spawn point from where you first created the Minecraft world. However, using the materials to craft a compass is pointless, because if you lay out the crafting recipe in the grid, you'll see that the compass preview is already pointing towards your spawn, so there's no need to craft it. In the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, players' eyes will actually now blink, as you can see. I don't know if that's just creepy or a really cool feature. In the alpha version of Minecraft, the top of the furnace had the stone texture, making it very easy to blend in with regular stone. You will always pick up your items in the same order you threw them on the ground. You can create a pretty cool looking bridge design by using unlit campfires as you can see. I really like the look of this. In an early version of Minecraft in dev, when removing the block the torch was placed on, the torch would move to another block instead of falling off the block, which is really weird. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft in beta 1.9, jumping would give the player experience for some reason, which is a little bit weird, but okay. Also in beta 1.9, the sun was changed for a brief time from being a square to a circle, looking like this. If a player tries to sleep in a bed that is occupied by a villager, then the villager is kicked out of the bed. How could you be so mean? Before shields were added into Minecraft, the player used to block mob damage by blocking with their sword, and it was also a great way to say hi to other players. The original default skin for Steve had a beard. Or a smile. It, it could have been a smile too. The crafting table used to be called a workbench. Notch, the creator of Minecraft, planned to add exploding arrows into the game, but sadly this feature never made it, which is kind of sad because they looked really cool. Placing carpets on top of fences is a great way for the player to get in and out of their farm without hostile mobs interfering, as they are not able to climb on the carpet. When the wolf was first added into Minecraft back in 2011, they were able able to attack and kill the player in peaceful mode if they were provoked, whereas in Minecraft today, they can't. I guess Minecraft worlds back in the day weren't as peaceful as they thought. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the early versions of Minecraft in dev, items used to stack up to 99 instead of stacking up to 64 like they do today. When TNT was first added into Minecraft, you could activate it by just simply punching it. Rose bushes do not apply damage to the player when you walk through them despite them having thorns on them as you can see. Do you think they should change this? Let me know in the comments. In older versions of Minecraft, in creative mode, attacking a hostile mob would actually cause them to be hostile towards you, which was a little bit annoying. I will never stop talking about this until they add this back to Minecraft, and that is that the rose used to be in the game, but they removed it and added the poppy instead. Why? Why can't we just have both? All sunflowers found in your Minecraft world will always face east, making them quite useful for navigation. Endermites will suffocate and die if they are on soul sand. Rest in peace, random endermites. On April Fool's Day, on April 1st, 2014, every player had their Minecraft skin replaced by a villager skin, as you can see, which looked really funny. Unlike tiny slimes, tiny magma cubes can actually deal damage to you 
you as you can see. If a cauldron is left outside while it's raining, then it will actually slowly fill up with water as you can see. Destroying obsidian with only your fist takes 4 minutes and 10 seconds to do, and unfortunately I had to do this for the sake of the video and I wish I didn't. If you fall from a high place and you're about to die, then exit the world right before you hit the ground and then load back into the world and you won't take any damage as you can see. Back in the beta days of Minecraft, a message reading Minecraft beta unlicensed copy with a sad face could be seen if someone was to play Minecraft without purchasing the game. In the beta days of Minecraft, ladders had a one block gap between them and you could still climb them. When the creeper was first added in the Minecraft survival test, they actually had a melee attack and dealt two hearts of damage to the player. If the player was to travel or teleport 30 million blocks from the spawn point, then they will actually reach a world border as you can see. When tropical fish spawn in Minecraft, 90% of the time they will appear as one of the 22 varieties that are seen on screen, whereas the other 10% of tropical fish that spawn, their patterns, size and colours are completely random, resulting in 2,700 different naturally occurring combinations of tropical fish. In the beta 1.8 demo at the PAX gaming event, when the Enderman was first added, they actually dropped diamonds as a placeholder upon death instead of ender pearls. You are able to make a really weird looking staircase by using fences and carpets. This is weird. You can kill a blaze with a snowball. I guess they just don't like snowball fights. The most amount of blocks you can fall from before dying on any difficulty is 23 blocks. So if you fall from 24 blocks, you're gonna die. Another weird feature about creepers in the survival test version of Minecraft is that they would actually explode after the player killed them, rather than the creeper exploding on the player as a method of attacking you. You can create a weird looking staircase by using cake slicers. When endermen were first added, they originally had green eyes and emitted black smoke particles, whereas today they have purple eyes and emit purple particles. Gunpowder used to be called Sulfur. When spiders were first being created in Minecraft, they were originally brown. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, the Ghast's fireball actually used to be a snowball that was on fire. There used to be a bug in Minecraft where if you shot yourself with an arrow, your tamed wolves would actually turn on you and begin to attack and kill you. Monoliths were glitched areas of terrain that could be found in Minecraft Alpha which resembled chunk errors and and they looked like this. Before beta 1.8, cacti appeared to be somewhat larger than other blocks when dropped on the floor. I mean, just look at this cacti, it's absolutely huge! In the survival test version of Minecraft, players were able to cancel the detonation of TNT by hitting it for the second time as they'll get the item back rather than the TNT exploding. At some point in Minecraft's development, there was a bug in the game where wooden slabs could only be destroyed with a pickaxe instead of an axe, which was a bit weird. If you exit your Minecraft world when holding an item like a diamond for example and then create a new Minecraft world, you will actually see a diamond in your hand for a split second before returning to having nothing. If a red fox happens to spawn in a snowy tiger biome, then it will instead be a snowy fox which looks like this. On top of that, if a red fox is bred with a snowy fox, then the baby has a 50% chance of either either being a red fox or a snowy fox. The chicken was added into Minecraft in the alpha phase of the game and the mechanics for pushing a chicken off the edge of a cliff was slightly different back then. So we all know that in Minecraft today that pushing a chicken off an edge will cause the chicken to flap their wings down to safety. However, in Minecraft alpha, the chicken would still flap their wings to the ground but it wasn't really safe as regardless of how soft their fall was, they would still take damage and die. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, when the snow golem was first added into Minecraft in beta 1.9, there was a bug in the game where the snow golem would throw snowballs at the player if the player was holding wheat in their hand. What do snow golems have against wheat? I just want to make some bread. What's going on? Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the early stages of Minecraft Alpha, there was a really unique feature 
feature in the game, which was known as Winter Mode. Now, Winter Mode was one of the two randomly occurring world types, with the other being a normal world type. So, upon creating a Winter Mode world type, the player would be greeted with four different types of snowflakes that would fall to the ground, creating a snow layer on any block exposed to the sky. In other words, your Minecraft world would be snowing 24-7. Now, there was a 25% chance for the player to get a winter mode world when creating a new world and a 75% chance to get a normal type world. However, in a later version of Minecraft Alpha, biomes were added into the game which meant the winter mode world type was removed and you would instead have to find a biome with a snowy environment. Before the snow golem mob was added in to Minecraft in version beta 1.9, Notch, the creator of Minecraft, originally planned to call the snow golem a snowman. We know this as in the story of Mojang documentary, Notch mentioned that he wanted to add snowmen that threw snowballs. Take a listen. Uh, another thing, uh, a suggestion is uh, to make a, a scarecrow because it would be so fun because you have like a pumpkin here yeah, and then some cloth and then some sticks. It would look very cute. And we should have snowmen as well that throw snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> However, after Notch revealed that he would add snowmen into Minecraft, a Reddit user stated he would instead call the mob Snow Golems, which later became the official name for the mob. If you look very closely, you will notice that the brewing stand, when placed, will emit a barely visible light level of 1. That's right guys, brewing stands provide you with light. Well, not really to be honest, because I still can't see a thing. Throwing a splash potion of any kind on top of your head is more efficient than throwing the potion at your feet, as the status effect from the potion will last slightly longer, as you can see. When the chest was first added in InDev, you couldn't craft it. The only chest you'd find were the ones in the structure you'd spawn in when you created the world. Additionally, these chests would contain every block and item that was added into Minecraft at the time. The chest is one of the only blocks in vanilla Minecraft that can naturally generate in all three dimensions, which is the overworld, the nether, and the end. If you have a double chest and store it with maxed out shulker boxes, then you are able to store up to 90,000 items within said double chest. Now that is a lot of items. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the alpha and beta days, players were able to place torches on chests. This was done by placing a torch on a glass block that's next to a chest. You could also place a torch on top of the chest by putting the torch on an air block that is between the dirt and the chest chest itself. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, there is an exclusive feature in the game where chests will render as a full block within the inventory, but not when it is placed. On Java Edition, chests within the inventory look the same as when they are placed, which is how it should be. During Minecraft Alpha and the early stages of Beta, players were able to create a triple chest that looks like this. To create said triple chest, the player had to make a double chest and then connect the third chest on a snow layer, which would then make this weird looking triple chest. It's worth noting that the triple chest was fully functional, containing 81 item slots, while the double chest contained only 54 item slots. Sure, the chest UI was all messed up looking, but you know, it was still a triple chest. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, the single chest, when placed, would always face in the west direction rather than facing the direction of the player. The only way players could fix this back in the day was by creating a double chest or placing the single chest against a wall. Oh my god, us Minecraft boomers had it rough back in the day, man. When you break a chest in Minecraft, it has this familiar cracking animation that we know and love. However, in beta 1.8, a change was made to where chests would no longer show the breaking animation. Now, this removal of the animation remained in the game all the way up to version 1.7 until it was finally re-added again in version 1.8. Why they decided to remove this in the first place, I'll never know. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, from version InDev all the way up to beta 1.7, the chest used to be a full block, which made them blend in rather nicely in your base. However, in beta 1.8, some major changes were made to the chest, with the first change being that the chest was made to look a lot smaller. Chests in beta 1.8 also received its 
familiar open and closing animation, but it didn't have its own unique sounds yet. This meant the chest at the time used to use the old door sound when you opened and closed it. Take a listen. Oh my god, these old sounds are so nostalgic, man. I could cry. Another weird thing about chests in Beta 1.8 is that the player held the chest in a very strange way. As you can see, the chest when held was shown at a different angle to other blocks, which looked really weird. Additionally, in third person, the chest when held wasn't even being held properly. I mean, just look at this. On top of this, when the chest was thrown on the floor, it rotated in a really odd way. This was because it rotated around one of its corners instead of rotating in the center like other blocks. Chests are able to generate in a total of 16 different structures in Minecraft. That's right, nearly every structure in Minecraft will have a chest. Speaking of chests in structures, the rarest item you can find within a chest in vanilla Minecraft is the enchanted golden apple. However, the rarity of the enchanted golden apple varies across each structure with the rarest being the mineshaft chest only having a 0.014% chance of spawning. So yeah, if you find a mineshaft chest with a notch apple in it, you are extremely lucky. On April Fool's Day in 2011, Mojang added a unique chest in version beta 1.4 that was known as the locked chest. This chest would naturally generate in a random location within each new chunk of your world and the chest couldn't be broken by anything apart from explosions. If you try to open the locked chest, a message would appear stating that you needed a Steve Co. supply crate key to open it and that you could purchase one at the Minecraft store. Clicking the go to store button would bring the player to an April Fool's shop page on the Minecraft website which then allowed you to add all these fake items to a cart. I'm not gonna lie, a creeper saddle sounds kinda cool. So yeah, this naturally generated locked chest in beta 1.4 developed into this huge April Fool's prank and players loved it. When chests were a full block in the alpha and beta days, the large chests had a line going down the middle of its texture. In Minecraft today, this line is nowhere to be seen and I'm glad because it looked a bit weird. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, from alpha to beta 1.4, players were not able to shift click their items into the chest. Oh, a pain I remember all too well. That's right, us veterans had to pain for drag our items into the chest like a bunch of peasants. It was so lame, man. But then in beta 1.5, shift clicking was added. Well, sort of. The feature kind of developed over the years. The locked chest I mentioned earlier in beta 1.4 was very interesting because when it was placed, it emitted a light level of 15, which was one level lighter than a torch. These chests likely emitted light so they could easily be spotted by players at night time for the April Fool's event. It still looks weird seeing a chest emit light though, I can't lie. In version 1.3, a mind-blowing change was made to the large chest inventory title. That's right, before 1.3 it was called the large chest, but in 1.3 it was renamed to the large chest? Yep, you heard me, the word chest received a capital C. How lovely. A more known fact, but every year on December 24th to December 26th, single and double chests will have their textures changed to Christmas chests, which will closely resemble wrapped Christmas presents. When baby villagers are standing on a bed, they will bounce up and down on it, which looks pretty fun, not gonna lie. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, the legs underneath beds were actually 2D and looked like this. However, in version 1.12, a change was made to where beds now have 3D legs and that's how they remain today. Additionally, back when beds had 2D legs in Minecraft, a visual bug occurred occurred when looking at the bed from a certain angle. So looking directly underneath the bed would make the bed legs completely invisible, which was rather strange. Placing a bed by using the set block command in Minecraft will only place half of the bed, which is a bit weird. Well, not really, to be honest. This only happens because the bed is two blocks long. In older versions of Minecraft on multiplayer servers, you were able to teleport another player while they were sleeping and they'd still be in the sleeping position when you teleport 
teleported them, which looked pretty funny. In Minecraft today, you can still teleport another player while they're sleeping, but they'll instead be woken up instantly, which I'm sure they'll find very annoying for disturbing them. I'm sorry, man, it was an accident. Please! If the player places a bed on ice, then the bed itself becomes slippery as if you were walking on the ice itself. Turning a zombie villager into a normal villager by using a golden apple and a splash potion of weakness takes roughly three to five minutes. However, placing a bed next to the zombie villager while it's in the curing phase will actually speed up the process. In Minecraft, there is a strange glitch in the game when it comes to beds. So, if you place a minecart next to a bed like so and then sleep in the bed, you'll for some reason end up floating in the sleeping position next to the bed itself. I guess that minecart doesn't want you sleeping in the bed. Before coloured beds were added into Minecraft in version 1.12, there were quite a few ways to craft the OG red bed. That's right, there were 3,456 different ways to craft a bed by using all of the wool and wooden plank combinations, which is insane. The feature of beds exploding in the nether was added because Minecraft creator Notch only wanted beds to work as a respawn point in the overworld. Honestly, that just translates to Notch wanting to troll the whole Minecraft community, and boy did he do it. In the alpha phase of Minecraft Pocket Edition, there was an exclusive feature in the game for beds. So in Pocket Edition Alpha, if you had taken any damage, you could sleep in a bed at night time to restore your health. However, this feature was later removed from the game to make food a more useful survival needed resource. If a player is sleeping in a bed that is inside lava, then you actually don't take any damage from the lava itself. That is until you wake up inside the lava and start burning to death, but I'm sure you'll be able to escape, right? As some of you may know, it is possible to defeat the ender dragon by using beds due to the beds exploding when you right click on them in the end. However, did you guys also know that it takes approximately four bed explosions to defeat the ender dragon? If you're gonna try this, just try not to blow yourself up in the process, okay? Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, a feature existed in the game when it came to sleep sleeping in a bed. So in the beta days of the game, when the player went to sleep in a bed, they had a chance to wake up and have either a skeleton or a zombie attack them, which was quite scary at the time. Well, at first it was scary, then it just became really annoying. Now, this feature lasted from beta 1.3 to beta 1.8 until it was finally removed in the beta 1.9 update. In older versions of Minecraft, when you slept in a bed, you could open your inventory at the same time, which resulted in showing your player model in the sleeping position on the inventory screen, which looked kind of funny. You right there, mate? You're looking a bit tired. Despite slimes being hostile mobs in Minecraft, they are one of the only hostile mobs in the game that does not prevent the player from sleeping in a bed. To be fair, slimes look so innocent and cute, there's no way you'd think they're a hostile mob until they kill you, of course. Beds were added into Minecraft in version beta 1.3 on February February 22nd in 2011. Additionally, when beds were first added into Minecraft, the item used a sprite texture in the inventory, whereas in Minecraft today, they use a 3D texture. Falling onto a bed in Minecraft is a good way to potentially save your life, as the bed will take up to 50% of normal fall damage. Beds are just amazing in every way, both in real life and in Minecraft. Anyways, moving on. The sky dimension was a planned dimension in Minecraft, and it was intended to be the opposite of the nether. Now, to get to the sky dimension, the player would have to sleep in a bed, and there would be a chance of the player teleporting to said dimension. However, with the introduction of the end dimension we have today, the sky dimension idea was scrapped, which is really unfortunate to be honest, because it sounded so cool. In older versions of Minecraft, when you went to sleep in a bed, you couldn't see your body in the bed, which was kind of creepy. But yeah, in Minecraft today, when you sleep, you can actually see your skin, which is how it should be. I much prefer it. If the player falls from a height high enough to take damage, but uses a bed before they hit the ground, then they won't actually take any full damage. That is until you wake up from the bed. Cheers for that bed. I thought you were going to save my life, but nope, you lied to me. I'm dead now. Thank you very much. Wow, I actually sounded genuinely annoyed just then. I'm fine, guys, I promise. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, from beta 1.3 to beta 1.9, 
1.5, beds did not explode when you try to sleep in them in the nether. Instead, trying to sleep in a bed did, well, nothing. This is a bit anticlimactic. Anyways, moving on. The underneath part of a bed uses the exact same texture as the oak plank texture. See? A more known fact, but it is possible to sleep in a bed during the daytime if there is a thunderstorm. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the inventory textures for beds are actually using the old 2D sprite textures, which look like this. On Java Edition, however, beds use 3D inventory textures, which look like this. Another difference in Minecraft Bedrock Edition is the animation when you sleep in a bed. On Bedrock Edition, when you sleep in a bed, the animation starts with you looking up in the sky and then you slowly tilt your heads towards the player's point of view. On Java Edition, however, it's not as cool because when you sleep in a bed, you just instantly look at your player's legs. The Villager was added into Minecraft in version beta 1.9 on September 22nd, 2011. When villagers were first added, they had no sounds and had a test certificate name tag above their head to indicate that they were still in the testing phase. On top of this, villagers in 2011 11 had the same mob AI as pigs, meaning they always just walked around aimlessly, which looks pretty funny. At the time of me making this video, there are a total of 105 unique villager skins in Minecraft, which is more than I thought. You are actually able to give villagers armor, which is very useful if you want to protect them. This is done by placing the armor in a dispenser and then dispensing the armor onto a nearby villager. Now, the armor itself won't be visually visible, but it will work as intended. Zombies hate villagers so much that they are still able to track and hunt down a villager that's under the invisibility effect. I mean, you have to give the zombie credit. It's quite smart. At sunset, most villagers in Minecraft will lay down in the nearest bed and remain there until morning. However, the green nitwit villager will stay up later before sleeping and also wake up later in the morning. That sounds a lot like me. Anyways, moving on. If you look closely at the fisherman villager, you'll notice that it has a fish on it. Oh really, Anthony? We never would have guessed, mate. So the fish you see on the fisherman villager is actually the old texture for the raw fish item. Now this villager fish texture was intentionally done by Mojang as a nice little callback to the original fish texture we had in Minecraft. So we all know that we use emeralds as a currency to trade with villagers in Minecraft, but this wasn't always the case. That's right, when villager trading was first being developed, Mojang originally planned to add ruby ore and rubies into Minecraft as a currency to trade with villagers. However, a Minecraft developer thought that ruby ore looked too similar to redstone, which meant emeralds were added instead. Rubies or emeralds? Let me know in the comments. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, zombie villagers used to use the exact same skin as regular zombies. The only difference is that they of course had the zombie villager head instead of a normal zombie, but yeah, if you remember the old zombie villager skin, then you are a Minecraft veteran. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, something very strange can happen with the villagers when they're sitting in a boat. So if the villager uses a nearby bed while they're in the boat, they'll be put in the sleeping position while still remaining in said boat. Yep, that's right guys, the villager is sleeping inside the boat. It looks quite comfy, to be honest. Anyways, moving on. Villagers are one of the only mobs in Minecraft that do not visually sit down when they're sitting in a boat or minecart. But as you can see, illager mobs and zombie villagers will sit down. I guess villagers just love standing. Before the addition of villagers in beta 1.9, Minecraft creator Notch originally planned for village structures to be populated by pigmen, which I guess were these pig-like villagers and looked like this. Do you guys prefer the pigmen or the villagers we have now? Let me know in the comments. In Minecraft, baby villagers are the only baby mob in the game that doesn't have a large adult size head compared to the body. However, mobs such as baby wolves, baby pigs, baby cows and all the other baby mobs use the same head size as an adult mob, making their heads appear much bigger than their body. Unlike the player, villagers in Minecraft are able to sleep in beds in the nether and the end. And 
when the player tries to do this, it will result in death, which is lovely. I'm joking, it is not lovely, it is so annoying. Anyways, moving on. During a raid, villagers can get scared and begin emitting sweat particles when you right click on them, which looks like this. It's okay, villager, don't be scared, mate. The cleric villager that spawns in the plains village actually wears a robe that has a certain mob on the back. That's right guys, this cleric villager is repping the creeper face robe. The appearance and concept of villagers were actually inspired by the shopkeepers from the 1993 game known as Dungeon Master 2. So we all know that villagers are able to open doors, but for some reason they cannot open trap doors or fence gates. You okay there villager? You're looking a bit stuck. Villagers in Minecraft are also able to climb ladders as you can see. However, they they do not recognise the ladders as paths and don't climb them deliberately, but hey, they can still climb them. On April Fool's Day 2014, Mojang announced that villagers had taken over Minecraft and they were not joking. Well, actually they were joking since it was April Fool's Day, but you know what I mean. Anyways, on April Fool's Day 2014, everyone's skin on Minecraft was changed to a villager skin and here's a screenshot of how it looked on a server. Turning a zombie villager back into a normal villager with a golden apple and splash potion of weakness takes roughly three to five minutes. However, if you place a bed next to the zombie villager while it's in the curing phase, it will speed up the transition process. Another block that speeds up the zombie villager curing time are iron bars. That's right, if you place some iron bars around the zombie villager, it will too speed up the cure time. In Minecraft, if an iron golem and baby villager are present, there is a small chance the iron golem will hold out a poppy for the baby villager, which is very lovely. Now this wholesome Minecraft feature is actually a reference to the 1986 Japanese animated movie that is known as Laputa Castle in the Sky. The green nitwit villager in Minecraft used to be called the generic villager. I much prefer the name nitwit because man these guys are nitwits. Sorry mate, only joking. Well not really. If the player defeats a raid then you'll be granted with the hero of the village status effect. Now when the player has said status effect, baby villagers will give the player a poppy as a thank you for saving the villagers, which is very wholesome. In the afternoon of a Minecraft day, all adult villagers apart from the nitwits will gather at the village bell for a town meeting, which is a very nice attention to detail. In the artwork for the Minecraft 1.6 update, a blue villager can be seen lurking in the background despite Minecraft never adding a villager with a blue robe. If a villager is struck by a lightning bolt, then it will turn into a witch. In Minecraft version 1.4, a texture appeared in the game files that appeared to be an angry looking villager head, and it looks like this. It seems like Minecraft possibly planned to add an angry villager expression to the game, but never did. This angry villager head remained unused in the game files all the way up to version 1.13, and until it was officially removed in Minecraft 1.14. If the player is under the invisibility effect, villagers will still look at you as if they can see you, which is kinda creepy, not gonna lie. In Minecraft, there are villager textures for swamp biomes and jungle biomes, despite swamp and jungle villagers not currently existing in Minecraft. I really hope we get swamp and jungle villagers one day, that would be really cool. The villager skins that were added in the 1.14 village and pillage update were actually inspired from a real life 2018 fashion show. Well, you can't deny it, the villagers have style. The picture you see on screen is the base villager skin that was used to create all the unique villager skins in Minecraft today. Now this base villager skin is of course never seen in game, but it's cool it was used as the foundation to create all the awesome villager skins we have today. When village structures were first added into Minecraft, Minecraft in beta 1.8, villagers were not yet added, meaning the village itself was completely empty, giving off a really creepy vibe. 
If you attack any villager within the village, your popularity will decrease, meaning normal villager trades will become more expensive. In other words, the villagers will start hating you. Not only that, if you thought your popularity among the villagers was just within that one villager structure, then think again. So if you attack a villager, your popularity will decrease within every village structure in your Minecraft world, so just, just don't attack villagers, guys. If you see a group of baby villagers, then they'll often be running around the village playing tag with each other, which is quite wholesome. Before the villager skins were overhauled in Minecraft 1.14, the only villager skins we had were these skins. Rest in peace, OG villager skins, you will be missed! In Java Edition, when the player switches to the Programmer Art Resource Pack, all villagers will have a green hood on their head, and they all look like this. The Nether Portal was officially added into to Minecraft in version Alpha 1.2 on October 29th, 2010. However, seven days before nether portals were added publicly into Minecraft, the gas was actually planned to spawn from activated nether portals. This meant that gas could have potentially spawned in the overworld, which would have been absolutely mayhem. But hey, here we are nearly 11 years later, and we still don't have this feature. When the nether dimension was was first added into Minecraft, Notch originally referred to it as the Slip, which meant the nether portals we know and love were referred to as Slip Portals. I definitely prefer the name Nether Portals to Slip Portals, I mean what even is that? If you spawn in a portal frame block by using commands, you'll quickly discover that falling blocks such as sand or gravel are able to go through the portal. Upon entering the portal into the nether, you'll also realise that the sand and gravel just drop as an item and don't get destroyed, which is very lovely. The Wither Boss is one of the only mobs in Minecraft that is not able to travel through nether portals. Are you okay there, Wither? Here, destroy my Minecraft world, that will make you feel better. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, players were able to duplicate items by using nether portals. To do this duplication glitch, you'd need a nether portal, a minecart chest, and some rails leading to the portal itself. Players would then put the item they want to duplicate in the minecart chest and then slowly push it towards the nether portal. Then right before the minecart chest enters the nether, you'd take the item out of the chest. If done correctly, upon entering the nether, you'll discover that your diamonds are still in the minecart chest, which means you are able to duplicate them. In Minecraft Survival, entering a nether portal takes exactly 4 seconds, whereas entering a portal in creative mode is almost instant. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in version Alpha 1.2.2a, players were able to spawn in activated nether portals by pressing the F4 key on their keyboard. Now, this cheat was accidentally left in a public version of Minecraft when it was intended to be used by developers when nether portals were first being well developed. Notch quickly realised the debug cheat was public to players and released Alpha 1.2.2b on the same day, removing the ability to spawn in nether portals. I bet players had so much fun with this cheat back in the day, anyways moving on. In the 16w32a snapshot for 1.11, a bug existed in the game with nether portals. That's right, in said snapshot, if the player used a fishing rod and let the bobber go through a nether portal, then it would crash the game for some reason. Yep, that's right, if you want to crash your game in this version, then just use a fishing rod on a nether portal. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, before version 1.7, a bug existed in the game with nether portals. So, like I said, if you played Minecraft before 1.7, water would be completely invisible when trying to look at it through a nether portal, which was very strange. On top of this, ice was also completely invisible to players when trying to view it through a nether portal, yet lava for example was completely fine to look at. But yeah, in version 1.7 the bug was fixed. Hoglins are hostile mobs in Minecraft that can spawn in the nether and they can kill you pretty easily if you're not careful. However, hoglins will not attack you if you are standing near a nether portal. This is because hoglins are scared of nether portals and if they go near one they'll just run away. It's okay hoglin, it's just a portal. If you're like me 
and you're sometimes too lazy to mine obsidian to make a nether portal, then you are not alone. But not to worry, as in Minecraft, it is actually possible to create a nether portal without mining obsidian. Just simply place water on top of lava until you form the shape of a nether portal and there you go, you can light the portal and go to the nether knowing you didn't have to painfully mine a bunch of obsidian. So we all know that in Minecraft today, you are able to create nether portals in lots of different sizes. However, in the olden days of Minecraft, this nether portal right here was the only design that let you activate it and if you remember this, then you are a Minecraft veteran. The biggest possible nether portal you can make in vanilla Minecraft is a maximum build of 23 by 23 obsidian, which is honestly pretty huge. I mean, just look at this portal, man. It's very impressive. If you want to travel to the nether in the end dimension, then you can't, as no matter how hard you try, you cannot activate a nether portal in the end, so don't even bother trying. At the time of me making this video, the nether portal is nearly 11 years old, which is honestly crazy to think about. When did you guys start playing Minecraft? Let me know in the comments below. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the alpha and beta versions of the game, flowing water was able to destroy activated nether portals, which was honestly quite annoying. However, in Minecraft today, flowing water will do nothing to said nether portal, which is very lovely. You can, however, place a water bucket on the portal itself and destroy it. In Minecraft, it is actually possible for a zombified piglin to rarely spawn from an activated nether portal in the overworld. With that said, however, the spawn rate of these zombie piglins from nether portals is based on the difficulty you play on. So on easy mode, the spawn rate is normal. On normal difficulty, they can spawn twice as often, and on hard mode, they can spawn three times as often. So yeah, if you're playing on hard mode, expect to see a few zombie piglins spawning from your nether portals. It's okay, just let them vibe and you'll be fine. The gas mob can be very annoying in the nether as they can intend to shoot fireballs at you, but accidentally hit and destroy your nether portal in the process. Cheers, Ghast. Appreciate that, mate. But don't worry, guys. If your nether portal breaks in the nether, a ghast can also reactivate your nether portal by once again shooting another fireball at you. Okay, Ghast, I take back my sarcastic comment. I really appreciate it, man. In Minecraft, when you enter a nether portal, you'll get this nausea animation while preparing to go to the nether, which looks like this. However, back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the alpha days of the game, the nausea animation while entering a portal moved a lot faster, which actually caused motion sickness for some players. Because of this, the portal animation was toned down in Minecraft beta, and it's remained like this ever since. In Minecraft beta 1.9 pre-release 4, the nether portal's texture was changed to have a slightly darker look. On top of this, the portal frame itself gave off a slightly dark reddish colour rather than the purple colour we're all familiar with. However, this weird nether portal texture change was reverted in Minecraft 1.0. The nether portal frame has the exact same hardness as bedrock, which means they're impossible to destroy with your fist or any tool in Minecraft. In older versions of Minecraft, trying to name a villager with a name tag would instead cause the trading interface to open. To counter this, players would have to stand inside of an activated nether portal and quickly name said villager. Before Minecraft version 1.8, players were able to spawn in the nether portal frame as an item by using the slash give command. This meant you could have the portal frame in your inventory and also place it on the ground for you to enter into the nether if you wish. However, the ability to spawn in the nether portal frame as an item was removed, but you could still spawn it in by using the set block command, which is something I guess. The zombie was added into Minecraft in the survival test version on September 1st, 2009, which was over 12 years ago. In Minecraft, all zombies that spawn in desert biomes have an 80% chance to spawn being 
replaced by the husk mob, which looks like this. This means it's actually rather rare for a zombie to be in a desert biome, as most of the time they'll just be husks. In the Minecraft 1.5 update in 2013, a change was briefly made to zombies, where said zombies would do increased damage to the player when the zombie's health was low. So in other words, when a zombie was about to die, they could kill the player a bit easier, which gave them a fighting chance, I guess. However, in version 1.6, this feature was removed, which I'm sure a lot of players were happy about. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the survival test version of the game, zombies would occasionally wear armor. In this version, however, the zombies would only wear iron helmets and iron chest plates. On top of this, the armor that the zombies wore in the survival test were purely cosmetic and did not increase the zombies' protection at all. In other words, the zombies just wanted to look cool, and they did. Well, I thought they looked cool. Anyways, moving on. In Minecraft Bedrock Edition, there is an exclusive feature in the game where baby zombies are able to ride adult stray cats, and if you want to know what that looks like, then here you go. Not only that, but in Bedrock Edition, baby zombies can also ride pandas, which too is a rather strange thing to encounter, but hey, it looks like this. I just feel so bad for the cat, man. I mean, just look at it. Anyways, moving on. In Minecraft, most hostile mobs will track the player within 16 blocks of their proximity, whereas zombies can track the player from up to a whopping 42 blocks away. This makes zombies rather annoying, as you'll always see a bunch of zombies approaching you from very far away. Yeah, I can see you, mate. Can you just go away, please? However, if you happen to obtain a zombie head and wear it, then the detection range of the zombies is reduced by 50%. So yeah, wear a zombie head and zombies will only be able to see you from 21 blocks away, which is still a bit annoying, but it's better than 42. Zombies are potentially the meanest mobs in Minecraft as they will attack and kill baby turtles, which is just horrible. This is so hard to watch, man, but I had to show it for the purpose of the video. I'm sorry, guys. If you thought that was bad, then it just gets worse as zombies will also seek out and destroy turtle eggs within a 20 24 block radius, which is just awful as well. I can't believe this is a thing in Minecraft. Anyways, Anthony, let's just relax. Calm down, mate. Let's move on again. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the survival test version of the game, zombies could run as fast as the player, making them really difficult to get away from. Listen, mate, get away from me, all right? I'd rather have a creeper blow me up than have you chase me. Due to zombies being undead mobs in Minecraft, a potion of harming will actually heal the zombies rather than, well, harm them. Because of this, a potion of healing will do the complete opposite to zombies. That's right, if you chuck a potion of healing at a zombie, it will actually deal damage to them and eventually kill them. In the 0.31 version of Minecraft InDev, a change was briefly made to where zombies were completely passive and wouldn't attack you at all. So yeah, if you want to chill and vibe with the zombies, play this version of Minecraft. Or, you know, you can just play creative mode, but you get my point. During Halloween, Minecraft is considered to be a slightly harder game, and here is why. So every year on October 31st, zombies have a chance to spawn wearing a pumpkin on their head, which means they won't burn and die in daylight. So yeah, enjoy dealing with zombies during the day on Halloween. Not sure why I said Halloween like that, but fair enough, moving on. Now the zombie was the second ever mob to be added into Minecraft, but what was the first mob? So the first mob added was the human mob, and they were just Steve skins that would run around aimlessly while flapping their arms about, which looked pretty funny. However, the human mob has since been removed from Minecraft, which means zombies are the oldest surviving hostile mob in Minecraft, which is impressive. Well done, zombie. I'm proud of you, mate. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, from version InDev to Beta 1.7, zombies would drop zero to two feathers upon death. Now, if you remember this, then you are a Minecraft veteran. Additionally, the only reason zombies ever dropped feathers in Minecraft was because Notch had no idea what zombies should drop when they were killed. But hey, in Minecraft today, zombies drop all sorts of things now, but I kind of miss it when they dropped feathers, to be honest, because it made it quite easy to craft arrows. Anyways, moving on. On hard difficulties, zombies have a 40 8% chance 
chance to spawn wearing gold armor. They then have a 37% chance to spawn wearing leather armor, a 12% chance to spawn wearing chain armor, a 1% chance to spawn wearing iron armor, and finally, zombies have a 0.04% chance to spawn wearing diamond armor on hard difficulty, which is extremely rare. Now, if you've ever seen a zombie wearing diamond armor, then let me know in the comments because I'm very curious to hear if you guys have ever encountered it. Zombies are actually able to spawn in the nether and here is why. So on hard difficulty, zombified piglins will occasionally spawn reinforcements when they are attacked by the player. Now most of the time, the reinforcements will just be more zombified piglins but sometimes zombies can be a part of the reinforcements as well which is pretty cool. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft when when zombies were standing inside of a cobweb, they would not burn in sunlight for some reason. Instead, they'd just chill in the cobweb and vibe during the daytime, which I'm sure zombies absolutely loved. The zombie head item I mentioned earlier in the video can only be obtained from a very rare scenario. So players can only obtain a zombie head if a charge creeper explodes and kills a nearby zombie. So yeah, be careful of the charge creepers. If a husk ever happens to be underwater, then it will turn into a normal zombie after vibing there for 30 seconds. This newly turned zombie will then turn into a drowned mob after an additional 30 seconds if it continues to stay there underwater. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, the baby zombie mob used to not burn in sunlight during the daytime. This made them one of the most annoying mobs ever, as you'd just be trying to vibe during the day when a stupid baby zombie would come charging towards you and potentially kill you as well. But luckily, in version 1.13, a change was made to where baby zombies would now burn in the sun, which I am so happy about, oh my god. If a zombie attacks the player while they're on fire, then there's a small chance that the player will be set on fire as well. On top of this, the higher the difficulty you're playing on, the higher the chance the zombie has to set you on fire, so watch out for burning zombies if you're playing hardcore. As of the time of me making this video, there is a glitch present in Minecraft when it comes to axolotls. So if you attach a lead to an axolotl, then it will begin to walk extremely fast around the player, as you can see. Why they do this, I have no idea, but this axolotl is absolutely loving it. This glitch also works with more than one axolotl, which means you can attach multiple axolotls to a lead and they'll all just circle around the player very quickly, which just looks absolutely mayhem. Anyways, let's move on. The reason why axolotls were added into Minecraft is because axolotls in real life are critically endangered, so I think it's great that Mojang are raising awareness for them. In Minecraft, axolotls will attack all underwater mobs except turtles and dolphins. This includes the Drowned, Guardian, Elder Guardian, Squid, glow squid, and fish. If a mob or player attacks an axolotl, then they have a 1 in 3 chance of playing dead. This means they'll pretend to be dead for 10 seconds while recovering 2 hearts of health. The axolotl you see on screen is an unreleased green variant of the mob, and it looks kinda cool. Now, the green axolotl was seen in the Minecraft Live recap screenshot in 2020, but it was never officially added in Minecraft 1.17 which is a shame to be honest. On top of this, in the trailer video for part 1 of the Caves and Cliffs update, the green axolotl can briefly be seen despite it not appearing in the update itself. Rest in peace, green axolotl. You will be missed! In Minecraft, axolotls can be bred by using buckets of tropical fish, but not by using the tropical fish items themselves. This is because in real life, axolotls will only eat living fish. And, you know, the fish that are still in the buckets are still alive, so this feature makes sense. The reason why blue axolotls have a 1 in 1,200 chance to spawn is due to the fact that there are only roughly 1,200 axolotls left in the wild in real life. Honestly, reading that fact is rather sad, but again, I'm glad Mojang is bringing awareness to axolotls. Despite their small size, axolotls in Minecraft are able to climb up blocks, as you can see, 
which looks so cute, to be honest. I mean, they're getting there. They're trying. You've got this, Axolotl. If a player kills a mob that an Axolotl is in combat with, then the Axolotl will give you the regeneration effect for a few seconds, which is very lovely of them. Right-clicking on an Axolotl with a bucket allows you to collect it, giving you a bucket of Axolotl, which looks like this. This allows you to put the bucket of Axolotl in a dispenser and dispense an Axolotl at the click of a button. Another thing you can do with a bucket of Axolotl is put the bucket inside of an item frame and display your lovely Axolotl. I'm not gonna lie, this feels a bit mean to be honest. The Axolotl should be chilling in the water and instead it's just trapped in an item frame, which is horrible. Anyways, moving on. The blue Axolotl is the only variant that is not based on a real life Axolotl. The other four Axolotls on the other hand are in fact based on real Axolotls, which is a nice attention to detail. But don't worry, the blue Axolotl is still very interesting as it was added after somebody suggested it on Reddit. So Reddit user known as Dark Eyes Flame mentioned that Minecraft should add a rare blue Axolotl and have its appearance be based off Mudkip from the Pokemon series. So yeah, the blue Axolotl isn't based on real life, but it is based off Mudkip from Pokemon, which is very cool. A wooden tool will burn exactly the same in a furnace regardless of its remaining durability. This means a used up wooden tool with low durability will be just as effective as a new wooden tool. Before furnaces were added into Minecraft, items were smelted in a different way. So in the early versions of Minecraft InDev, players could smelt ores by dropping the item on the ground and setting them on fire with a flint and steel. Definitely a very different way of smelting ores, but hey, at least it worked. A lava bucket is the most effective furnace fuel to use in Minecraft as it can smelt up to a whopping 100 items, which is crazy. In Minecraft Java Edition, if you break a furnace with your hand, it takes exactly 17.5 seconds to destroy it. With that said, the furnace will not drop as an item, so don't waste your time doing this like I did. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, however, destroying a furnace with your hand again takes 17.5 seconds, but the furnace will drop as an item. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in versions Alpha and Beta, furnaces took a lot longer to destroy with a pickaxe. On top of that, in Minecraft Alpha and Beta, no matter which pickaxe you used, it took the same amount of time to destroy the furnace. So yeah, breaking a furnace back then was just really painful. The smelting time of each item in an active furnace is exactly 8 seconds. In the alpha versions of Minecraft, the top part of the furnace texture was made out of stone, which looks like this. This made the furnace a lot easier to hide from other players as you could blend the furnace in with regular stone, which was pretty cool. However, in Minecraft beta, the top part of the furnace received its own texture. The village structures that you find in snow biomes contain these snowy houses that look like this. In said snowy house, you can find a chest that has a 9.9% .9 chance to have a furnace inside of it. If you have tamed a cat in Minecraft and have an active furnace going, then be prepared as your cat will sit on the lit furnace to keep warm. At some point in Minecraft version InfDev, a change was briefly made to where the furnaces no longer had a face and used the same texture all around. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, this does not look right at all, but yeah, this change was quickly reverted. Another change that was briefly made in the InfDev version of Minecraft was the furnace smelt time. So as mentioned before, each item in Minecraft takes 8 seconds to smelt, but in InfDev, a change was made to where items only took 4 seconds to smelt. So yeah, items smelted a lot quicker in InfDev, but this change was quickly reverted. Smelting items in a furnace by using a block of coal is more efficient than using just the coal itself. This is because one block of coal can smelt up to 80 items in a furnace, whereas just using 9 coal in a furnace will only smelt up to 72 items. In the early stages of Minecraft Alpha, there used to be a really annoying bug in the game when it came to placing furnaces. So in Alpha, when you placed a furnace, it would always place facing away from the player, which was really annoying when you wanted to place it in your house. I hated this back in the day. Oh wait, am I recording. Uh, moving on. Using the set block command in Minecraft, you can spawn in 
behind an already active furnace known as the Lit Furnace. Now this Lit Furnace is in the name as it will always stay lit as you can see even if there's nothing smelting in it which is kind of weird. A 64 stack of coal blocks will smelt items in a furnace for a total of 14.2 hours which is equivalent to 42 Minecraft days. So yeah, the coal blocks can smelt for quite a long time. By default, the GUI of a furnace simply says, well, furnace. However, if you rename the furnace in an anvil, then the GUI name will change to whatever you renamed the furnace to, which is pretty cool. Furnaces, when active, emit a light level of 13, which is slightly dimmer than a torch, which gives off a light level of 14. Furnaces will light up the blocks all around it, despite it only being lit up from the front. However, during the snapshot phase of the 1.4 update, an experimental change was made to the lighting of furnaces. So in snapshot 12w39a, a change was made to where the furnaces only lit up the blocks in front of them. But then in a later 1.4 snapshot, the change was reverted as apparently it was causing performance issues. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, before the 1.9 combat update, players could spawn in the lit furnace I mentioned earlier as an item. So from version 1.3 to 1.7, the lit furnace item looked as it was supposed to look in the inventory. However, in version 1.8, a bug formed where the lit furnace item changed to have a missing texture in the inventory, which looked like this. This was strange because when you place the lit furnace, it looked normal, but the item just looked all messed up. But then in the 1.9 combat update, Day, it didn't matter anyway because the ability to spawn in the lit furnace as an item was removed from the game. The crafting table was added into Minecraft in version InDev on January 30th in 2010. This means the crafting table is now turning 12 years old, which is absolutely crazy to me, man. The first ever crafting recipe added into Minecraft was definitely a strange one. So crafting was first introduced in Minecraft InDev and the first ever crafting recipe was a recipe for the arrow. Now, to craft this arrow, you would need eight apples in the shape of a chest plate like this. Yep, I'm not joking, guys. This was the crafting recipe that started it all. Isn't it just beautiful? Back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the alpha and beta days of the game, the crafting table used to be extremely painful to break. This was because breaking it with an axe made made no difference to the breaking speed, which meant it took ages, man. Okay, I'm probably being a little dramatic, but it did take quite a while. But then, in version beta 1.9, a change was made to where you could break crafting tables with an axe, which I'm sure every single player was happy about. The smithing table is a block in Minecraft that players can use to upgrade their diamond tools and armor into the more powerful netherite type. Now, the smithing table currently looks like this, but when it was first added in Minecraft 1.14, it used to look like this. Now, as you can see, the old texture for the smithing table definitely closely resembles the crafting table texture, which likely meant this was a placeholder texture before being changed. Before crafting tables were added into Minecraft, players couldn't, well, craft. Okay, okay, I'm joking. Well, sort of. So, before crafting tables were a thing, the only way players could craft was by pressing the B key on their keyboard. Well, that's right, pressing B meant players could use a 3x3 crafting grid to craft items anywhere they wanted to, which now that I think about it made Minecraft slightly easier because you didn't even need a crafting table, man. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft Pocket Edition, which is now known as Bedrock Edition, players were not able to craft stone-related blocks using the crafting table. Instead, players on Pocket Edition had to craft their beloved loved stone blocks by using an old variant of the stone cutter. Now the old stone cutter looks like this and I'm sure many pocket edition players are getting very nostalgic just seeing this block. Anyways, moving on. The crafting table can be used as fuel to smelt items in a furnace. Now a single crafting table is capable of smelting a whopping total of 1.5 items which is absolutely crazy I know. Honestly, just stick to using coal. If you are ever in a situation where you look underneath the crafting table, you'll instantly notice that the bottom texture is using the same texture
texture as the oak planks texture. I said texture quite a lot just then. Anyways, let's carry on. Wait, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, the bottom part of the texture is the same as the oak planks texture, but back in the earlier days of Minecraft, in the early versions of InDev, the bottom texture for the crafting table was actually different. That's right, looking underneath the crafting table in InDev would bless the player with the oak log texture instead, which looks extremely weird being on a crafting table, but fair enough. Have you guys ever taken some time out of your day to just look and admire the crafting table? No? Just me? Well, if you are as weird as me, you'll notice that the crafting table texture features a hammer, a saw, and some pliers. Now, to me, this has always been kind of strange. Also, I always thought those pliers were a creeper face, and I feel lied to after all these years, man. <clears throat> Anyways, do you think any of these tools should be added into Minecraft? If so, let me know in the comments which one you think it should be, and why. Oh my god, do you guys remember back to a time where whenever you leave items in the crafting grid after crafting, they'd just be thrown on the floor when you exited the crafting interface. Now, it wasn't insanely annoying. Actually, you know what? It was, because there was a chance your diamonds could just go flying into the lava after closing the crafting grid, which would just ruin your year, to be honest. Okay, sure, 90% of that would be your fault and 10% the game, but it was still in the game, so I can kind of blame it. But yeah, in version 1.12, a change was made to where closing the crafting interface would now return any items that you left inside the crafting grid to your inventory, which was a change I welcomed with open arms, let me tell you. If you remember when the crafting table was called the workbench, then you are a Minecraft veteran. That's right, from Minecraft Alpha to Beta 1.1, the crafting table was officially known as the workbench. However, since version Beta 1.2, we have called it the crafting table and it's remained that way ever since, and I love it. Back in the earlier days of Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the smithing table used to be crafted by using one crafting table and one cobblestone. However, in Minecraft today, it no longer uses the crafting table, as the smithing table is now crafted with four planks and two iron ingots. Not only that, but in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, the fletching table was originally crafted with one crafting table as well, and one arrow. But yeah, in Minecraft today, the fletching table is crafted with four planks and two flint. The crafting table has gone through many small texture changes. So when the crafting table was first added into Minecraft, it looked like this, which looking back at it now is a very nostalgic texture. But then in an early 1.14 snapshot, it was changed to look like this. But that didn't last very long as it was slightly changed again in a later snapshot for 1.14. But that didn't last very long either, as finally in 1.14.1, the crafting table was changed for a final time to look like this, and it's remained that way ever since. The crafting table is able to naturally generate within a few structures in Minecraft, and those are as follows. First of all, crafting tables will generate within a witch hut, which is pretty cool. Secondly, a crafting table can be generated within the basement of an igloo structure which is very lovely. Next up, you can find some crafting tables in some small village houses, which is mind-blowing, I know. Who would have thought villagers would have crafting tables? What are you looking at? I was complimenting you. Then finally, a crafting table is able to be generated within the tents that generate outside the pillager outpost. So if you're good at craft in that tent, be careful of those pillagers, man. You don't want to get a crossbow arrow to the face. Then finally on our list, placing a crafting table underneath a note block will play a bass sound.